I'm a fan of sin. I think sin is in, as the kids say. Really, who doesn't want to sin? But after the elevator sex is over, once the row of cookies are consumed, after we've coveted and stolen our neighbor's lawn, once the good feeling evaporates, we feel bad. And feeling bad makes us try to be good. But more importantly, feeling bad gives us something to do. Otherwise, we'd probably just sit around all day and sin. We've talked about the major sins, but we didn't touch on what I consider the minor sins. For example, I think cheapness is a minor sin. I have a friend, I'll call him Ricky, because that's his name. He is the cheapest man I know. For my birthday once, he gave me a stamp. That's a minor sin. And what about couch worship? The minor sin where you sit around on the couch with a channel changer under your chin? Believing in your horoscope, I think, is a minor sin. Bad driving, inability to read a map, baby talking in public, yep. Sleeping with someone just to use their Q-tips, well, no, that's not really a sin. But I've been asked to talk about the wiliest of all the major sins, pride. Why would I talk about pride? Because they asked me, and I was too proud to say no, which right there makes me an expert on this stuff. And I like pride. It's not so obvious, so detectable. It's the vodka of sins. A minibar bottle of Silent Sam gulped each morning before a job you're too proud to admit you hate. It doesn't even seem like a sin. I have pride in my bowling trophies. I take pride in my home. How bad can that be? But trust me, folks, it is. It's the little sin that could. Like how an enemy can be disguised as a friend, and how a narc can sometimes be disguised as a chiropractor. But that's another story. Pride is the most human of all sins, and like us, what is best about us, our strength, emotionality, our certainty in who we are, can also be what's worst about us. Strength taken too far is belligerence. Emotionality equals crazy. Certainty in who you are taken too far, it fills up history books. Pride causes men to wear wigs and girdles and such. It causes those to cheat thinking they're too smart to get caught. A teenager to start his own religion with himself as the boss. It fuels the cruel dad. It propels the, can you please do it right, mum. It makes God grimace. And ask the skipper how they got to Gilligan's Island. And why did John Jr. fly his plane through the haze? He should have said, honey, I don't really know what I'm doing. Can we just get a clubhouse sandwich and cuddle? She would have said, yeah. I don't like to name drop, but I phoned Pizza Nova once and asked for my usual Hawaiian. I said, Operator 17, can I have a medium Hawaiian with extra pineapples? And she said, Sir, you have ordered 81 pizzas in the last four months from us. You can have whatever you want. I muttered something about having broken my jaw and being confined to blender pizzas. I was too proud to admit that, well, I was in a phase of my life that made Willie Loman look like a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. I was lonely, but too proud to admit it. I'd wander around in my pajamas, playing my electronic solitaire game standing up. In the afternoon, there was junk mail, and I was the waiting occupant. I watched cooking shows but never cooked. Even my dog got bored. See, I was having trouble with my girlfriend at the time. The relationship was so unfulfilling that even then I considered her my girlfriend at the time. If I had been tough enough, or better yet, soft enough, I would have been able to admit, Listen, honey, we picked the wrong ones. You are a nice lady and you sure do smell good, but you are not for me. Then I would have done the honorable thing, taken my bag of receipts and left. But I was too proud to admit I had made a mistake. So I went to couples therapy with her. Turned out the therapy wasn't for us, it was for her. We sat down and the therapist asked if I felt hopeful about our relationship. I mumbled something about how I'd been watching Eraserhead a lot lately and how it had inspired me to try again. She turned to my then girlfriend and asked her the same question. Her answer? She took out a tape recorder, placed it on the desk and said, I want to play you something. It's a tape I've made of me singing my pain. I don't like
like to name drop, but I took a two-year program at Mount Royal Community College, and no, if you come over to my house, I can't actually show you the diploma, but that's not the point. I took business because I thought, well, I've had a full youth, I've had my head kicked in, I've snuck into the kitchen of A&W and stolen food off the grill, I've taken my friend's grad suit and lowered it out the window of my apartment with my fishing rod until someone on the street took it. I knew it was time to settle down. I didn't want to end up as a loser, or worse, a failure. Even then, I realized a failure is a loser who has reached his full potential. Why was it important for me not to be a loser, to be in fact what is loosely called a winner? Pride. I did what others have done. I tried to muscle success, and I didn't know what I was doing. I took business because I thought businessmen knew about success. Of course I hated business, and it hated me. I wasn't organized. I didn't have good business acumen. I wore nurse's shoes and kept my notes in a green garbage bag that I slung over my shoulder and eventually forgot in a bar. How did I do? My first year's percentage was, well, let's just say it's about what my agent gets. If we had a transcript of our lives, what would it reveal? The history of the world is made up of a lot of things that seemed like a good idea at the time. If you don't believe me, just look in your closet. If we had a transcript of our lives, how many times would we repeat ourselves? How many times would us Canadians find ourselves saying sorry when we weren't really sorry at all? I went to my aunt's house. She was sick, really sick. Too sick for ginger ale sick. But she was a proud woman, stubborn to a fault. She baked her own bread, shoveled her own sidewalk. I had come to see her, but still she was serving me. She was serving me when she grimaced and dropped her tray all over the TV. My uncle was a man of action. He delivered pizzas well into his 70s. He said, we got to get you to the hospital. At the door, my aunt looked down at her feet. Well, I'm not going to the hospital in these old slippers. I'll look like a bloody fool. And so we waited and waited. Well, in the next room, my aunt changed into her new slippers. It took her forever, and I think that made the difference. She died in my uncle's pizza delivery car. The proud, sweet thing. I couldn't help but think. It's been over 30 minutes. I guess she's free. The saddest joke that stand-up comedians tell all the time is how a man cannot ask for directions. A guy will be driving along and say, This doesn't look familiar. Better keep going. This is true. This is the joke of mankind, the beauty and stubbornness of man, a guy pretending he knows what he's doing, a man staring under the hood of a car having no idea what's wrong, only something is wrong. This is pride, a man raising a family when in reality he wants to lie in a fetal position sucking his cell phone like a forgotten finger saying, who am I mummy? How did I get here? Why can't I tell these people I am alone, but you are not alone, because we all are. So let's not be too proud to admit that we're all the same. We all crave warm breath on us. We all like french fries. We all want somewhere to go and someone to be there when we arrive. Our lives matter mostly to us. Our failures matter mostly to us. So let's not only do what we're good at. Let's not count on what little we know, because pride like my aunt's new slippers, cannot protect us. In its amalgam, pride is all us people doing what we think is right, never considering the possibility that we are wrong. People continuing to hum their simple tunes to themselves as they dig, drown, and die. Pride wafts through the forests, changes the cities and tunnels into our earth. (laughs) 